Howdy, I'm Bob Terry. Welcome to the Forsaken Westerns. Up next, we've got an episode of an anthology series, and Private Webb of the Texas Rangers is escorting a very dangerous prisoner back to Texas. It's his old friend, John Finner. They've known each other a long time and know a lot about each other. And this trip is full of mental torment and anguish and a lot of physical danger for Private Webb. And John digs his spurs into him every chance he gets. The title of this episode is No Compromise. Our stars are Robert Strauss and Stephen McNally. Sit back, relax, kick your boots up, and enjoy this. And we'll see you after the show. I told you the southern local ain't doing here for another eight minutes. You gonna say any more on this telegram? No. Nope. Let's make sure you got it right, huh? All right. To Adjutant General William Harding, Texas Rangers, Austin, Texas. Located John Fenner using alias John Steen. He and one accomplice heading west through Alabama. Please send request for extradition ahead to Montgomery, Alabama immediately. Good. Sign it Private Earl Webb. You a private and a ranger? That's right. And this is a little out of your territory, ain't it? Yes and no. This extradition you're asking for, is that so you can arrest the man here in Alabama? Sort of. But since you ain't got it yet, what are you going to do? Look, will you just send the message? This is Alabama, mister. You better have a legal right before you arrest a man here. Let me worry about the legal technicalities. You just send the telegram, hmm? All right. None of my business. False arrest. That's what it is. False arrest. What you after this Fenner for? Murder. The telegram says he's with an accomplice. Yeah, what about him? You know who this accomplice is? Nope. I'm just after Fenner. Seems to me you could have got help from the sheriff or something. Not without the right papers. You really got yourself out on a limb, mister, not knowing who's working with Fenner. I figure they might be sitting together. Maybe so. Then on the other hand, maybe no. And then where will you be? Well, it might take a little maneuvering, but I'm figuring on them being together. your telegram off. What makes you so sure Fenner's on the Southern Local? It picks up the express shipment from Montgomery, doesn't it? It sure does. And John's on the train. John, you talk as if he's an old friend or something. Maybe he is. Don't do it, John. Don't try it. Glad to see you again, John, in quite a while. Sure is nice running into you like this. You're not being very smart, Earl. 
Not unless you want to get shot in the back. What do you say, oh, why don't you give me back my gun and run along as if you'd never seen me? Why don't you just put out your hands so I can snap these bracelets on, huh? You may want to get shot, but I'd like to avoid it. For friendship's sake. Sure, glad to run into you, John. Didn't know when I was going to see you again. Folks back home will sure be surprised when I tell them I met you on the Southern Local. Now get up. Come on, get up. Turn around. Now back up, slowly. One slow step at a time. Make yourself a comfortable seat, John. We're taking this train right through to Austin. To General William Harding, Austin, Texas. Arriving Montgomery in the morning. We'll pick up extradition there. Fenner now in custody. His accomplice dead. Private Earl Webb. Midnight. You know, I'd take it right on to you killing my partner. How's the hole he put in your leg? That'll do. You ought to have a doc take a look at it. I will in Montgomery. After I get the extradition. Sort of dangerous, ain't it? Carting a man around without the right to arrest him. I've been after you since the San Antonio holdup. But when you crossed out of Texas, you kept me moving so fast, I never knew where to have the extradition sent. <laughs> what do you know about that? Evergreen? Evergreen? All off for Evergreen. You know, it's plumb crazy sending you all over the USA for just a little holdup. And the killing of a ranger. Oh, I only shot him in the leg. You shot him in the stomach. <laughs> what do you know about that? Evening, man. Thinking, John. Mm -hmm. mm, nothing. Except remembering when we was kids together. Oh, that was a long time ago. Oh, not so long ago. Remember old man Baxter's watermelon patch? <laughs> and the missing pinto? <laughs> they never did find out who took it, huh? Mary Harris. Yeah, she's married now. Got three kids. Oh, I bet she's still sweet on you. Well, well, how can you do this to me, Earl? After all that? That's where they sent me. I know you better than anybody else. Guess I should have come back to Alabama with my pa. It saved us both a lot of trouble. Well, who's got trouble? You ain't got the extradition yet. And this is Fenner country. They're swarming all over the place. <laughs> You'll never get me past Montgomery. We'll see. I'm frozen. 
What happened to that stove? That is kind of cool. Let's take a look. Fire's gone out. Well, here's some kindling. Oh, you didn't have to do that. No hard feeling. Yeah, you're the one that's called. You do the stoking. You're doing all this for the Rangers, is that it? That's it. What'd they ever do for you? Private Webb. Seven years and still a private. <laughs> Why, by this time, you should be the adjutant general. Well, you know the Rangers. Well, at least they could do is send your partner. This job requires three men. <laughs> Not even a partner. General Harding said he'd send a man. I guess he has held up. Yeah, just like the extradition. Why, that's no way to run a business. I get it. <laughs> Private Webb. Sure ain't gonna impress the court any in Montgomery. I said forget it. Shut up! Hey, you two, quiet. My passengers are trying to get some sleep. Sorry. Hey, Jack, how about this? <laughs> this Texas Ranger here puts chains on me in Alabama, and he ain't even got an extradition. I don't want no trouble on my train, mister. You better get this straightened out. I plan to in Montgomery. The extradition's waiting for me there. Well, it better be, mister. I can't let you continue on my train without it. <laughs> what do you know about that? Right on, or you making such an early call? He never opens his chambers before noon. Interrupting a man's breakfast. <clears throat> Coffee all over my coat. <clears throat> well, what is it now? What is it? I'm Private Earl Webb, Texas Rangers. Did you say Private Webb? Yes, sir. All right, Private, go on. <clears throat> General Harding sent a request for extradition here in this man's name. What name? John Fenner. John Steen. <laughs> Took my specs to make you out. Morning, boy. Morning, Judge. <laughs> Request for extradition, huh? Well, seems to me it ought to be here if the court got it. Wouldn't you know if it came in, sir? Not exactly. Judge Holt's in court this week. I'd take over an emergency. I thought you were Judge Holt. Judge Fenner, son. Judge Anson Fenner. <laughs> I'm positive General Harding sent the request. Well, see for yourself. I'd take it right on, were you not believing me? Now I'll go wake up the sheriff and you release John Steen to our custody. Wait a minute. I've got a warrant for this man's arrest. Well, this says Fenner. He says he's John Steen. Anyway, this Texas warrant is no good in Alabama. He's my prisoner, and he'll stay my prisoner. See here, Private, you have no authority whatsoever. You're out of your jurisdiction. And you're obstructing justice. Private Webb, if I find you in contempt, you're the one that's going to jail. I'll get the sheriff. The Rangers ain't going to give you no medal for contempt, Earl. In fact, they'd probably leave you to rot right here in Montgomery. Don't open that door, Judge. You aren't threatening the court. Not exactly. Just don't call the sheriff. You couldn't wear those specs without your ears. To General William Harding, Austin, Texas. A Judge Fenner was presiding in the Montgomery court. He said the extradition didn't arrive. And proceeding without it, Private Earl Webb. Treating the judge like that was plumb crazy, Earl. They'll wise all the kinfolk and they'll take it hard. Why, you... <laughs> You'll never get past Morgantown with your hide on. Last time it was Montgomery. Now, this is Fenner country all the way to the end of the line. They'll be waiting at every stop. Everything fixed up now? Sure, everything's just dandy. 
Don't tell me you didn't get it. Mister, the judge didn't try to stop us. Are you going to? I can't hold up the train. Then get it rolling. Next stop, Cedar Creek. Next stop, Cedar Creek. Well, maybe they knew what they were doing after all. Oh. The Rangers. Take somebody a little crazy to do a job like this. Morning, ma'am. <laughs> well, I guess my dad was right. About what? About you. Remember how we used to talk? Yeah. Why, oh, he always used to say that you were the one with the adventure in your bones. You came to a fork in the main road, or well, you'd take the cutoff just to see where it leads. <laughs> what was it my dad always said? One step to the other side. <laughs> you would have been with me instead of the Rangers. Your dad was quite a philosopher. Even when they hanged him. Private Webb. Seven long years and still a private. Why, how much longer can you keep on with a tin horn outfit like that? Sometimes I wonder. And if you do bring me in, what'll you get? Pat on the back? Another dirty job. We could get off at the next stop together. Who'd know the difference? Not a show. Just think of it, Earl. You and me together again. Why, there's a lot of money for a man with your flair, Earl. We had some high heel times. <laughs> yeah. That was before you killed a ranger. your leg, girl. Sore. It's acting up a little. Hey, you let it go much longer, they'll have to saw it off. Oh, it'll last till we get to Austin. All for the Rangers. What do you get out of it? Laughs? Dancing? Those high heel times are still around if you want them, Earl. Maybe a man wants to settle down someday, have a family. Oh, you've got yourself a gal, eh, girl? Fixing to get hitched? Maybe. What you waiting on? Can't do it on a private stay, that it? Sure, that's it. Well, you can't expect a gal to wait around forever. Not even for you. She won't have to. Won't she now? Seven years of private, and you still don't know when you're going to get your breath. It'll come. When? Huh? When will it come? Who's the sucker, Earl? Whitlow? Whitlow? All off for Whitlow? Ma'am. Thanks. Howdy, Cousin John. Going for a little trip? Not far. Not far. <laughs> How's your ma, Cousin John? On her ears, ever. How's your pa? Oh, just fiddling good. Just fiddling good. Evening, Cousin Dan. Evening, Cousin Gabe. Cousin John. 
Been a dog's age, cousin Dan. Yeah. You're looking kind of peaked. You off your feet or something? Oh, I guess a little too much excitement lately. How's your paw, cousin Gabe? Oh, just fiddling good. Just fiddling good. What's wrong, girl? What you whittling, cousin Dan? Hand spike to hold the rail. What rail? Riding rail. You mean you're gonna ride somebody on a rail? Likely. At Cedar Creek. <laughs> well, what do you know about that? I plumb forgot my tar and feathers. Coming into Cedar Creek. Coming into Cedar Creek. Coming into Cedar Creek. Uncle John. Evening, Obi. Boys. Forget it, Earl. There are too many of them. Come to relieve you of the company of our cousin, mister. My hand spike's all finished. Yeah. We'll ride him on that rail. Climb out the window, Uncle John. Nobody's gonna stop you. Hey, go ahead, John. Wait a minute. I want this train empty before it leaves the station. Start moving. If anyone lays a hand on Fenner or me, I'll blow his head off. To General William Harding, Austin, Texas. Some of Fenner's ten tried to take him off my hands at Cedar Creek. They didn't. Private Earl Webb. Sleep. Uh, Four hours. Makes a new man. Did you get a nap? No. <laughs> what do you know about that? Two whole nights. Never thought you'd make it. How long it'll be before we get to Austin? I'll pull him in now. That ranger I shot. Personal friend of yours? Nope. Why are you taking it so hard? I don't think you'd understand. Earl, back there at Cedar Creek, you wouldn't really have shot me. Oh, yes, John. Right through the head. Austin, Austin, end of the line, all off. Austin, Austin, end of the line, all off. Go wait till everybody gets off. Formal. Thanks 
Next time I'll tie a ribbon on him. Good to see you anyway. Sorry it was such a mess. Man we sent never caught up to you. I can't understand why you didn't get that request for extradition in Montgomery. Fair's got lots of relatives. Anyway, it doesn't matter now. Didn't say anything about a bad leg. Why don't you tell him, Earl, just this once, how it really was? Maybe we know. I'll take you prisoner, Lieutenant. What did he say? Well, that's right, you didn't know. Your commission came through two hours after you left to pick up Fenner. Lieutenant, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, you've been a lieutenant for five days and never knew a thing about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you know about that? Looks like the twisted morality of grab all you can, forget about what's right, do what's wrong if it's going to help you. Looks like that wasn't enough to distort or corrupt our honorable ranger. Thank you for joining us for the Forsaken Westerns. My name's Bob Terry. We hope you'll join us again here next time. Have a great day.